Courtney. I'm sitting and chatting with Carmen Kissel Verrier, the author of a highly anticipated Canadian memoir called The Butcher Shop Girl. I am so excited to chat with you about this book. We've got a lot to dig into because it feels like there is so many things and so many stories that we're going to learn from you in this book. Of course, let's, let's drop it down to the basics. A memoir. What exactly is it? Let's let's explain it. Well, first of all, thank you so much for coming, Courtney. I just absolutely will love working with you. So thank you. Of course. Um, let's get into memoir. Okay, what is memoir? A lot of people ask me that too. Um, the easiest way to explain it is that it's a snapshot in somebody's life. It could be a really pivotal two month period you went through, three years, 20 years, but it's not the whole story of your life. That would be an autobiography or a biography. So the main difference of memoir is that it's just a snapshot in time uh, of somebody's life. So how long, you were saying sometimes it's two months, sometimes it's three years, how long would you like guesstimate or say that this memoir is for you? Yes, uh, well, I open up with a very exciting escape scene in South America. Um, I found myself into deep water and deep trouble in South America when I was 19 years old. So I take the reader from uh, that opening moment and I bring them back to the beginning so that they can understand how I got into those situations, which is what everybody wants to know. And then I leave them when I'm 21 years old and I decide to change my life and move on in a different direction completely with a lot of preparation, a lot of planning. And it ends when I'm 21 years old. So it is just like those few years, really, that, oh wow, this is gonna be a roller coaster of a few <laughs> years, I can feel it. Yes. Um, why have you decided that now is the time to put this story pen to paper and, and publish it for the whole country, Canada, and world to hear and see? Yes, that would probably be my number two question that I get asked <laughs> all the time, so thank you. Um, I thought that it was time to bring the butcher shop girl to life because I spent so many years after I was 21 trying to reject and forget about my early upbringing and the situations that I found myself in during this book. And I realized over time that with 21 more years that went by, getting married, starting businesses, becoming a mother to two children, that we are wonderful just the way we are and our experiences from the past are so formative and we need them we need to embrace them because they are a part of who we are going forward and you got to take the good with the bad and it's all so wonderful if you could really truly just embrace it. So that's my goal for The Butcher Shop Girl is that it inspires other people to own themselves in any capacity. The stuff they're not proud of, the stuff that they're really proud of and put it all together and bring it to your table. I love that. It takes guts to be able to do that. So girl, you got guts. Well, it took a while. I'm in my 40s now, so I feel like there's something that happens to you too when you're a woman in your 40s. I think a lot of people could relate to this is that you just, you don't care so much. <laughs> you, you tend to be like, you know what? I'm more interested in the truth. And that's where we, we go with that. So this book really is a projection of truth, my truth. And I think it's wonderful. I've healed a lot with this process love hearing that. Yeah. Um, so publishing this book, I'm sure it's not an easy process yeah. whatsoever. Tell me a little bit about that journey for you. Publishing, gosh, okay, so just even to get the book composed, uh, to have enough of a working manuscript that you can sh start shopping it to various publication houses was in itself, that's a three year journey. It was three years for me to centralize my own thoughts on this book. Um, to get enough gumption to do it, mm -hmm. then to sit down and actually do it. So uh, I did have a help with a writing coach as well that I worked with for about seven, eight months that helped to get my thoughts uh, organized. Uh, we decided on how the chronology was going to go. Should we open with a cliffhanger and then bring the reader back to the beginning? So developmental edit process was probably a good three year process. And then after I had a good enough working manuscript ready to go, um, even as a technical writer, I'm not a copy edit expert, so I needed to seek out that type of expertise and I found it with uh, Friesen Press. So I'm super thrilled to be uh, under the flying the Friesen Press author banners um, with the other amazing authors that have come before me with Friesen Press and they really helped me to bring this project to life and 
uh, yeah, three years, I would say, <laughs> from deciding to do it, doing it, mm -hmm. and then finding that right publishing house to bring it live. Was there any like time along the way where you're like, you almost got hesitant or got cold feet and thought maybe you were in over your head doing this? Yes, I would definitely say uh, quite a few times that I, well, it's a daunting process. Mm -hmm. You can't just write when you feel like it because if you were to write when you feel like it, you'll never get it done. I think every amazing author will attest to that. I am hoping to join them in those ranks and that the Butcher Shop Girl definitely delivers for people, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a tough process. You really have to write every single day, even if it's just staring at a blank piece of paper for uh, 10 minutes and getting one sentence out. At least it's something for that day, and the next day will be a little bit better. So between the, the daunting elements of sitting down to compose a, 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 any sort of written piece, whether it be a short story, a novel, a memoir, or whatever, you need that dedication. So. Uh, there was a few times where I wanted to throw my hands up in the air and say, you know, what am I doing? I'm in over my head and luckily because of people like my, my best friend Kelly, whom you guys are going to get to meet as well, who's also in this book. We have a 30-year friendship. She was a big cheerleader. Keep going. You've got this. You've got a good story to tell. You need to keep working with that and as well with my family, my husband in particular. Uh, Sean is amazing with uh, keep going, you got this. It doesn't matter how long it takes, he would say that just keep going with it. And I thought that was really valuable advice and I'm really thankful for that. And now, being that this is your first memoir, first book, right? Yes. Um, was there any memoirs that you were reading that kind of inspired you or inspired your writing style, uh, prepping for or while you were writing this book? Yes, um, definitely. In 2007, I'd like to say around there, I came across uh, The Glass Castle by Jeanette Walls. And since then, it, was, it wasn't a movie at the time, but it's since been made into a major motion picture. And Jeanette Walls had an incredible story. Her memoir was just, it really resonated with me. Um, what I liked about it the most was that she, as well, had a very unusual upbringing but she preserved the integrity of the characters in her story, primarily her family members. Um, so you, you didn't really know how she felt about them as you were reading her entire work, but she left it up to the reader to decide. And I thought that was so clever because it's, it was a very unbiased approach to presenting her story. And I really wanted to try to mimic some of that in The Butcher Shop Girl because I want the readers to decide what they think about these very, very colorful characters in my book that I've come across in my life. The second person who inspired me with memoir was uh, Tara Westover's Educated, an incredible woman um, who has an even more incredible story. She, I believe, didn't step foot into a classroom until she was 17 years old and then later went on to earn a PhD from Cambridge. So no big deal, that's pretty remarkable. And the challenges that she had to overcome to get there were monumental. So um, as well, her too, she also preserved that writing voice and integrity for the characters that she uh, portrayed in her book. Um, and gave me a lot of confidence to try that writing style out for myself. I love that. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people, you know, would be scared to be this honest, this open about their story and their past. So how did you really find uh, the, the strength and the courage to write this and then put it out there? Yeah, so that's a little bit what we talked about earlier too. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm in my 40s. I kind of feel like the truth will set you free. There's value in the truth. And if more people could just share, we would have probably less problems with managing um, real pandemics like mental health. That is a problem that affects every single person and every single country and largely due to the fact that it's hard to be vulnerable. So I really embraced vulnerability on this journey, um, brought Alexa out of hiding. At 21 years old I tucked her away in my old life and never wanted to really go there or think about her too much ever again and, and she had so much value to add to my adult life that I kind of thought, yeah, other people have shared, like people like Brene Brown, um, she's a fantastic speaker that talks all about owning your truth and you know there's value in that and use that to forge your way and that the truth makes you feel good. It makes you feel good to just get it out there. And secondly, I would say finding courage to do this would be 
that everybody has those skeletons in their closet. You have them, I have them, everybody has them. Mm -hmm. um, depending on how long you've known me in our community, which is a very small community, you might know some of these stories, but you would, if you were a newer person, you wouldn't know them. So I spent my whole life kind of hoping that this next new person I would meet in my small community maybe didn't know my past. And I kind of feel like, nope, it's a badge of honor. I wear it with pride and I'm completely fine with it. It's, it's obviously not my life now, mm -hmm. but I'm happy that it happened. And I hope that being vulnerable inspires other people to be vulnerable. I want everybody to write a memoir. There are interesting pieces in your life um, there's interesting pieces in anybody's life. Like I said, whether it be a reason or a season or a lifetime, write about it, because I want to read it. <laughs> I really want to read it. I'm curious like that. So I hope that's what people get from The Butcher Shop Girl as well. Well, I think it's, like you were saying, very relatable when you said, you know, being in a small town, that next person I meet, I, I'm so excited to have a fresh slate with them. I think that's so, so, so many people in these small rural communities that feel that way, no matter how crazy those skeletons are in their closet. Yes, so some people knew about mine and some people didn't, but everybody has them. Mm -hmm. That's, I guess, the ultimate point. So there's a lot of major themes in The Butcher Shop Girl. Uh, we've got damaged mother-child bonds, uh, character development arcs, action, adventure, traveling, misfit friendships, uh, and of course making big money as well. What was one of your personal favorites to talk about and dive into? Well, surprisingly, there's a lot of sensational true life events that made it into this book, and some I tucked away just for me and to keep forever. So. The ones that I speak about in the book that are my favorite are probably the people that I met along the way. They were my guides and they were completely peculiar, um, very misunderstood people as I had felt as well at that point in my life. And they welcomed me with open arms, no matter what, uh, unfettered love and acceptance. And I must say that's the first time in my life that I felt that way. Unconditional love came from the most unlikely people and the most unlikely sources. So definitely one of my favorite things about The Butcher Shop Girl is bringing to life the people that I got to spend time with and hoping that other people appreciate them just as much as I do. And what kind of things uh, would you tell the younger version of yourself and, and the girl we're going to hear about and know a bit more about in The Butcher Shop Girl from mm. yourself sitting here today? Yes. What would I love to tell young Carmen? I would love to tell her that she could probably chillax a little bit, <laughs> that not everybody is going to get her, and that it's gonna be okay. You're gonna be okay. And that you have to just, that you have everything inside of yourself to give yourself that security and that independence that I was so desperately searching for and would chronically overachieve to get. She could relax a little bit <laughs> and she could chill out a little bit. <laughs> yeah. I think that's something we still have to tell ourselves yeah. every now and then. It's like, okay, take a step back. <laughs> you're good, you're fine. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. Uh, and a good, I think, question to ask me as well is, how is your relationship with your mother these days and your family these days? Yeah, great question. Um, my family is so wonderful. So. Um, I come from, uh, half of my family is quite Ukrainian, the other half is very French, as you'll meet in the book. Uh, totally different value systems, really. Uh, all wonderful people, all survivors. You know, growing, out, growing up out here in uh, Prairie, Alberta, it's very, very cold in the winter, and the summertime days are long in the fields, and working with the animals, and they're just really tough people. And they're just so beautiful, I think, because of that to me. Uh, very large family. I love them all. They're all incredibly inspiring. They all do amazing things uh, in their own respects. So my relationship now with them is, is very good. Um, I'm very close with my father. I'm always still working on my relationship with my mother. I would regard us as close though. Um, we have totally different views on a lot of things, but I think we occupy that space of respecting each other quite nicely and I'm very proud of the person that she is and all of the things that she taught me as well. She's a very strong person. I would say there's no other woman that I've ever met that's stronger than my mother. I love that. Um, so one of my favorite uh, like little pieces of 
your book is a memoir for misfits and mavericks. I'd love for you to elaborate on that, kind of where, where that comes from and what that means to you. Well, there are so many. I, I identify myself as a, a misfit and a, a maverick, I guess, but even as a young girl, I always noticed that I just didn't quite fit in, ever. No matter what situation I was in, no matter how hard I would try, there was always something there. Now, whether that was my own perception, on hyper overdrive, you know, uh, overthinking things quite often. I'm a Virgo, they tend to do that <laughs> all the time. Um, you know, and pick things apart and really just overthink and overanalyze. But I never felt like I really fit in. So I found that the best way to fit in was uh, overachieving. And I, I really liked sports, I really liked uh, formal ballet study for a lot of years. So I just threw my all into those things and I. I got known for that. Uh, Carmen was always going to make the A team on any sport, and she was a really great classical ballerina. Um, those are the things I like to be known for, um, and they helped me to fit in. But truly, I found it so difficult to relate to regular girls and regular families, and suffering uh, through a divorce at six years old in a very, fairly Roman Catholic small community. There's a bit of a social stigma there that stuck to you and you, you feel like you could just never shake it off. So when I was growing up, that was something that I was very sensitive to and I talk about that a lot in the book as well. I would say that uh, Mavericks are people who don't take any guff from anybody. They're trailblazers and they're, they're doing them no matter what. And uh, you know, there's cautionary tale there as well. Many of those in the book about what a misfit and a Maverick is. So to me, I wrote The Butcher Shop Girl for anybody who likes to read about stories about people who don't fit in. If maybe you didn't feel like you fit in, this book will definitely speak to you. So it is truly a book for misfits and mavericks, or anybody who maybe kind of wants to be <laughs> a little bit more badass, a little more ballsy, and a little bit more not today. Well, I'm so excited to, to really dive into your story and learn more about you in your new upcoming book, The Butcher Shop Girl. Thank you so much, Courtney.